Silicon Valley billionaire Peter Thiel is in the news for getting his fourth citizenship. Today, I'm going to break down his passport portfolio, say what I would do differently, and tell you how you can use this strategy to your advantage. It wasn't that long ago that we were telling you about Peter Thiel's multi-billion dollar Roth IRA, which he's in the news for. Politicians, of course, hated it that he was able to put money into this Roth IRA, grow it into a huge sum, and now take it out tax-free. But it's Peter Thiel's citizenship policy, now apparently seeking his fourth, that allows him to tell any politician that he doesn't have to listen to them because he has options. I'm gonna tell you how you can do the same. I'm Andrew Henderson, founder of Nomad Capitalist. We help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors and sometimes nine, 10 and even 11 figure entrepreneurs and investors legally reduce their taxes, diversify and protect their assets, increase their freedom and grow their opportunities. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. The LA Times reporting that Peter Thiel is in the process of obtaining Maltese citizenship, and I'm gonna break down his portfolio. What does he have? Born in Germany, he is a German citizen. Now, it's worth saying, because I think a lot of folks don't understand this, in the United States, in Canada, in most American countries, you're a citizen because you're born there. Not generally true in Europe. It was true in Ireland at some point in my lifetime. It's true in Portugal now. If you are a resident, they recently changed that. Uh, but in most European countries, Germany included, if you don't have a reason to be German, you're not going to be German. So his parents were German. He was born there. That's why he's German. Now, Germany has long somewhat looked down on dual citizenship. They're looking at changing that now. Uh, but the longstanding procedure has been that if you want to get a second citizenship as a German and not lose your German citizenship, you need to go through a court process. And so we've watched a few people do this. You generally should have some kind of ties to the country that you are trying to become a dual citizen with. And then the courts will say, hey, go ahead and do it. Uh, and so Peter Thiel became a citizen of the United States. I presume that they uh, said, hey, go ahead and keep it. Then, uh, about a decade ago, he became a citizen of New Zealand. This came out in 2017 when he uh, owned a property, it was found out, that could only be owned by citizens. And they realized, oh, this guy became a citizen. Uh, my understanding is that there was a million dollar donation to a relief project. He wrote a letter to the New Zealand uh, government saying that no country uh, better reflects his values of the future than New Zealand. Uh, and so the kind words, plus the money, plus no doubt uh, his status and his prestige and the idea that he would come and add value to the country by creating jobs or starting businesses or doing other projects there. That's something that was enough for New Zealand to say, we're going to waive naturalization requirements. He had been there a very small number of days. They gave him citizenship by exception, basically. And so that's a situation where uh, at a high level like New Zealand, other TRA passports, Austria does that. There are some countries in the Baltics that do that. So there are some European Union countries. If you start a green energy firm, I mean, if you are at the level that Peter Thiel's at, or even one tenth or even one one hundredth the level he's at, and you can go and invest substantial amounts of money or have a big philanthropic impact, there are countries in um, you know, Europe, for example, similar passport quality to New Zealand that will allow you to become a citizen. Perhaps at the time he thought, well, I'm already German. I already have access to live in those countries. Why do I want their slightly less uh, good passports, you know, other EU countries. And so now, according to the LA Times, Peter Thiel is going through the process of becoming Maltese. My understanding, although not stated by the, the media, is that he's just going through the standard uh, citizenship process called the MEIN. It's not technically a citizenship by investment program, but it functions much the same way, where you're going to go and spend a nominal amount of time there, which is not applied in the Caribbean, uh, citizenship by investment programs, but he's going to go and spend presumably a couple weeks similar to what he did back in New Zealand. And he's gonna go through a rather formal process which has multiple levels of due diligence, more than probably any of the other programs did. Uh, certainly more than you need to become a US citizen by naturalization and probably more than what you'd have in an exceptional process. He'll go through all this due diligence, they'll examine everything, and he'll eventually be granted uh, Maltese citizenship. How this word got out, I'm not entirely sure, other than Malta does notify uh, your country of tax residents now when you obtain citizenship. But it's about a 15 to 18 month process, and I presume he's just going through the standard process um, since why bother getting some kind of exception when you can just donate 750,000 euros uh, for the first person and 50,000 euros thereafter. Malta is somewhat unique from some of Europe's golden visa programs in that you can already be an EU or EEA citizen and go through their program. If you are German, you can't really go and do the golden visa programs, like you're already European, why do you need to come and get residence here? Uh, but you can go through Malta's program. And so if that's true, and if he keeps all four of those passports, he will have four very high quality passports, what we call TRA passports. He could renounce, not that he would, uh, but he could certainly renounce the US citizenship. And I presume a person at his level 
uh, would be able to get some kind of you know, E2 visa or something back to the United States as a German uh, or as Maltese. German certainly is a superior, superior passport, but Germany obviously comes with the baggage of the energy problems they've had. It comes with the baggage of the current political, uh, you know, the politicians want to raise taxes. Um, there may be some you know, goals in the future to tax Germans on an extraterritorial basis. Uh, it's perhaps not that likely, but it's possible that politicians in a big country like Germany would say, why are you German and not paying taxes where you, if you live overseas? If he's paying taxes in the U.S., that may not really affect him very much. If you were paying taxes in New Zealand, probably not affecting him very much. But certainly, it would be a step in the wrong direction. And so for a guy who's a very good you know, manager of a portfolio, you want to have different high-quality countries that you have access to. And so if Germany ever went crazy, he could revert to simply being Maltese and have all the same access to live in Germany, for example, or visit Germany, or travel anywhere throughout Europe and have that access to live anywhere in Europe. New Zealand, obviously, you can live in Australia or New Zealand. Uh, it's a country that is very isolated. And so for his vision of the future, uh, where there may be chaos in the Northern Hemisphere, that's not a bad thing to have. But what I take issue with his passport portfolio is not the fact that he has it. I think it's brilliant. I think nobody's been more in the news as a highly successful you know, celebrity billionaire than Peter Thiel for uh, the stuff we talk about, you know, protecting your retirement, you know, having second citizenships. But they're all essentially the same citizenship in my mind. Right? And so if you look at um, you know, the balance sheets, some are better than others, but they're all largely legacy brand countries, not Malta, because people don't know about Malta. So I think Malta is not a bad one to add to the portfolio, but you're still in the EU. And so if I'm going to be adding more passports, for me, now if you're a billionaire, you can get New Zealand to give you citizenship based on your, on your name and your accomplishments. That's not, maybe not bad. Is New Zealand going to chase people who don't live there for tax? Again, probably a small chance and, and not important to him if he already lives somewhere where he is taxed. But why not have access to some kind of country in South America, for example? Chile has certainly taken a turn to the left, although you can argue certainly so is New Zealand, so is Germany, uh, so is the United States. And so I would look at Chile, for example, as an equal quality passport to that of any of the above that I've mentioned. But you have access to Mercosur in South America. You have a continent that's on the way up. It is less than 10% of the world's population. And yet you have tons of arable farmland. You've seen plenty of politicians going and buying farmland in places like Paraguay and Uruguay. Why not have access to an up and coming trading bloc like Mercosur? And so if you, if you feel uncomfortable being a citizen of you know, some more chaotic country, Chile is a visa waiver program country of the United States, highly regarded, high income country. I wouldn't see any problem with adding that. Uh, I'm not aware that Chile has an exceptional process, uh, but I'm sure they could find a way to allow Peter Thiel to become a citizen if they really wanted to. Uh, you could also look at countries like Uruguay, for example. For me, uh, that would be a very interesting place. And again, not aware of an exceptional procedure there. Uh, but they could find some way perhaps to, to make that happen. Those to me would be very interesting passports to have. And so Uruguay is kind of the Switzerland of South America, uh, certainly has a lot of the benefits that New Zealand has. Lots of arable land, uh, not a lot of people, relative stability, far away from all the chaos in the world. That's the kind of passport I would want to add that's more diversified. And yet you see, for example, just as a, a balance to the Western world, which is currently uh, tied up in geopolitical issues in the, in the Russia-Ukraine war. South America, whatever, whatever you think about the war, South America is the biggest block of countries outside of the former USSR that has visa-free access to Russia because they maintain relatively neutral relations in that regard. And so if you look at the ability to you know, have food, certainly to me, a place like Uruguay is much more attractive than a place like New Zealand without a lot of the baggage that New Zealand might bring because they can't have that baggage. I mean, it's, they're not part of the quote unquote international community where they have to stand up and tell everybody how they shouldn't be able to come home to their own country, right? It's happened in Australia. And so you have these small countries like Australia and New Zealand that have this kind of outsized influence in world politics because of their you know, Western affiliation. Do you want that in your passport portfolio? Maybe you do, but I would also want to add something different. Now, should Peter Thiel go and get a Caribbean citizenship? It seems almost kind of, you know, pedestrian if you're at that level. But I can tell you, I mean, there are billionaires. We've worked with very, very high net worth individuals who get Caribbean citizenship because it is just simply a, a, a commoditized procedure. And so do I think that the Caribbean in an era where perhaps people are worried about global warming, although he, Peter Thiel is talking about seasteading, is that maybe the best play? Yeah, perhaps not. But you have a part of the world that has opened up to, let's say, Grenada and Dominica, more open to China. Is that something that could be beneficial in a portfolio? 
perhaps. Right? Do I want countries that they're just going to totally leave me alone? That's one thing that's missing from his portfolio, is a country that's going to totally leave him alone. I think Uruguay is going to leave you alone, but the Caribbean is going to really leave you alone because they're in the business of get our citizenship. And if you don't leave here, live here, we're going to leave you alone. Certainly, there could be other countries that are up and coming. I mean, if you wanted to be more extreme, you could look at the talk of the African Union granting some kind of greater trade and, and migration privileges within all the African countries. If you are a, a long-term investor and you believe in Africa dominating the, the latter half of this continent, there's a country like the Seychelles, the Mauritius, again, uh, not aware of exceptional procedures. Certainly, there are countries that he probably wouldn't want to be associated with, like a Rwanda, which I believe does have an exceptional procedure. You can get Rwandan citizenship if the president signs off on that. Certainly, he could go to a country like that and make some kind of investment or bring some attention to the country, which would warrant being granted citizenship. And so I would imagine that he wouldn't want that. But I'd also imagine that if you're a billionaire and people know who you are and people, you've got a very transparent, I mean, open past. Uh, people would accept that much like Angelina Jolie, for example, got Cambodian citizenship. Okay, we get it. Like, we're not going to treat her as a Cambodian for due diligence purposes. There's probably some lunatic at a Swiss bank who, who would put her on a blacklist because Cambodians aren't allowed, even though she's obviously not Cambodian. And maybe they would do the same for Rwanda. But generally speaking, I think if you're at that level, you can almost survive it, right? Do I think you should get Rwandan citizenship unless you really want to be there and be in Africa? Yeah, maybe not, because maybe you want to move somewhere else and they're going to look at that as kind of a weird thing to do. But a country like that would certainly be open to granting citizenship. And Rwanda is doing a lot of uh, interesting things. Something like Armenia I've talked about consistently. Now that they are opening up potentially some, some element of a citizenship by investment program could be interesting. Um, I don't exactly know his views on, on that geopolitical issue. But if you side with you know, Armenia on that, that could be something that's interesting to, to have. I don't see Peter Thiel as someone who's doing business in um, you know, the Middle East dramatically. So Turkey, perhaps not interesting for that. But the point is, if you have cachet, if you have wealth, you can go and get citizenship from countries that offer that. And so I love what Peter Thiel's done doing and bringing attention to this. I think a little bit more non-Western, more diversified countries, probably the easiest one would be to start in South America, um, in, in countries like Chile or Uruguay that are more, um, you know, that are less chaotic, let's call it, could be interesting. Hey, nothing wrong with being Mauritian, for example. That could be an entree to things for generations to come uh, and, and others. Right? Uh, so on the right track, that's what I would do if I were him. Uh, is there a passport that you would like to get if you could get any of them that you would invest in and you would carry with pride? Leave a comment below. I'd like to hear from you.